Hey everybody, what's up? Mark Green here from DiabetesDietGuide.com and today we're talking about whether or not carbohydrates are bad for you. As with all our blogs, the first thing we need to do is actually understand what we're talking about. So what are carbohydrates? Well, if we really delved into it through a microscope, carbohydrates are simply made up of carbon and hydrogen, hence the name. They're one of the energy providing nutrients in our diet. They're one of four alongside fat, protein and alcohol. Now all these nutrients grouped together are called macronutrients. So they're big nutrients and they give us energy to help power all the activities that we do throughout the day. Carbohydrates alongside protein provide four calories per gram of that nutrient. This is much less than alcohol, which provides seven calories per gram and fat, which provides nine calories per gram. So for example, if you had 50 grams of carbohydrates on your dinner plate, you'd have 50 times four calories so you'd have a total calorie intake of 200 calories from carbohydrates at that meal. We have lots of sources of carbohydrates in our diet. So actually carbohydrates is an umbrella term which describes lots of different food groups. The first is starchy carbohydrates. So these are the foods that you're generally going to have on the dinner plate. Things like pasta, rice, potato, also options at breakfast such as cereals and oats and bread are other examples of carbohydrates. So all these starchy foods are examples of carbohydrates. But then we also have the other category. We have sugar. So sugar is a form of carbohydrate and this comes in two forms. You can have natural sugar like fruit and also the lactose found in milk and yogurt. That's also another form of natural sugar. And also you have your more processed sources. So things like cakes, biscuits, sweets, jams, marmalades, dessert, but also things that also you could say fall into the natural side of things, but actually they are quite processed when they get to the market. Things like honeys, uh, fruit juices, they kind of hover in between whether they're natural or processed, but nonetheless, all these fall under the carbohydrate banner. We also get a small amount of starch in protein-based foods like beans, pulses, lentils, chickpeas. So although they're vegetable based, their primary nutrient is protein, but they also carry some starch within them. In fact, we can expand that out and actually all vegetables have some form of starch in them. But when we compare them against the starchy carbohydrates or the sugary carbohydrates, particularly the processed ones, actually vegetables have a very small amount of carbohydrate in them when we stack them up and compare them like for like. So just to summarize then, carbohydrates are found in lots of places, starch, vegetables, protein-based foods like those beans, pulses, lentils, and chickpeas, um, basically called legumes, some in natural sugars such as lactose found in milk and yogurt, and also natural sugar found in your fruit. So already then, hopefully you notice that there is a vast variety of different carbohydrate containing foods, and they are all different. So when we start looking into studies and the literature, and also just anecdotally from clinics and working with patients to assess and answer our question about whether or not carbohydrates are bad for us, we need to start defining the types of carbohydrates that these people are eating because they're all very different. For example, broccoli and cake both fall under the carbohydrate banner, but they are completely different beasts. And these comparisons continue throughout the studies and also when we're just talking about this generally, because of course we always just refer to them as carbohydrates. But what are we comparing really? Are we comparing vegetables and fruits against processed sugar or processed uh, starchy carbohydrates like white bread, white rice? Or are we looking at brown rice, whole grain bread, whole grain cereals, couscous, which generally are considered more healthy? And this really gets to the crux of the debate around carbohydrate. What type of carbohydrate are you eating? How often are you eating them? and what's your portion size of them. Now in the UK, we notoriously overeat carbohydrates. We just eat too much and often this is reflected in our body weights as we know two thirds of the population are overweight or obese. And a large proportion of that will be coming from carbohydrate intake. When we look at the guidelines in the UK, it says that we should be aiming for around 50% of all our calories coming from carbohydrate, which actually when we start to think about it stacks up because if you're gonna have 2000 calories per day, which is generally the recommendation for a UK adult, then that's gonna to equate to around 1000 calories coming from carbohydrates, which loosely works out around 250 to 280 grams per day, which is referenced in the UK guidelines. But what is lost in translation is that includes all forms of carbohydrate, whereas more often than not, people jump straight to the starchy foods and think, God, 
250 grams of carbohydrates is like 15 slices of bread, which sounds like a lot. But remember, we're not just looking at the starchy foods in this recommendation. It includes vegetables and fruits, beans, pulses, lentils, those legume foods, any um, carbohydrate that you might get from your dairy as well. In fact, you may have heard the recommendation to get five a day from fruit and vegetables. Now, if you did this, and depending on how you did it, with which proportions and combinations of foods that you did it with, you can pretty much guarantee that you're gonna have an obligatory 100 to 150 grams of carbohydrate in your diet, just coming from vegetables and fruit and other sources that I just referenced before you've even moved on to the starch. So then suddenly your portions of starch and the allowance that you can have in order to meet the total recommendation is a lot less. So portions like half a plate of rice suddenly start to become maybe a fistful or even a handful before you actually start to exceed the recommendations. And this is the point that's lost on many people. The other thing that the UK recommendations actually assume is that everyone who is following those recommendations is following all the recommendations that we advise to people for general healthy living. And that includes activity levels. Now you may have heard the other recommendation that's quite widely known in the UK, which says you should do 30 minutes a day, five days a week of moderate intensity physical activity um, every day, five days a week. But the part that's missed out of that recommendation is minimum. That is the bare minimum. That's not for weight loss, that's just for general health. And we also know that around a third of UK adults do not reach that recommendation. So we're quite inactive as a nation. And again, we're talking about the bare minimum. We want people to go above and beyond that. And to be honest, when we look back through history, people would have been a lot more active. And therefore their dietary patterns and the trends and recommendations need to reflect that. If you're not doing the bare minimum physical activity, you need to eat less calories. And with that, you need to eat less carbohydrates. So where a lot of the confusion comes in regarding the research and whether or not carbohydrates are bad for us, is the type of carbohydrates they're studying, because we have good carbohydrates, which we've mentioned is more like the vegetables, fruits, whole grains, whole cereal, or whole grain cereals, granary foods, oaty foods, and legumes, as opposed to the more processed foods like sugar, like cakes, biscuits, sweets, and the processed carbs in the starchy category, like the white breads, the white pastas, the very highly processed, quickly absorbed foods. They are different beasts. So first we need to define what type of carbohydrates we're looking at. And often the studies don't do that. And often when people are talking about carbohydrates, they don't do that. Then we need to think about how much are they eating? Are they having reasonable portions or too much or too little? Because regardless of how healthy a food is, you can have too much of a good thing. And if you're not being very active, even if you're having all the right food on your plate, if you have too many calories, you're gonna gain weight and your health may deteriorate or you may not be in as good a health as you can be if you're carrying too much body weight because one of the factors that helps define how healthy we are is body weight. Now I mentioned about those good carbohydrates. Now the reason we know these are the good carbohydrates is because actually when we start to separate out the different types of carbohydrates and define what we're looking at, we know that when you're having the whole grain granary, slow releasing, healthier carbohydrates, lots of vegetables, meat in your five a day, modest amounts of fruits and lots of legumes, people have lower rates of diabetes, cardiovascular disease, cancer rates, they have better gut bacteria, less levels of obesity, and the list goes on and on and on. Whereas when they have high intakes of highly processed carbohydrates and high intakes of sugar, actually the rates of all those diseases goes up. So what we can see is there is a vast difference in the two types of foods that we're studying, despite the fact they all come under the same banner. So initially to answer our question before we move on to looking at particular things like diabetes, Carbohydrates aren't bad for us. In fact, athletes, people who are at the peak of their physical condition, eat a lot of carbohydrates, but they're burning up, they're using the fuel. If you're not someone that's doing that or you're not very active, you need less of it. And then you need to look at the types that you're having. But if you're having the right kinds at the right portions for your physical activity levels, then absolutely no doubt about it, when we look at the evidence, carbohydrates are good for us and they reduce the risk of so many diseases and it's something that should be featured in the diet um, in my opinion without a doubt particularly things like vegetables fruits and those legumes 100 percent and then just modest amounts of starch but ideally going for the more healthier versions where things start to become a bit more complicated is when people develop conditions with specific dietary considerations such as type 2 diabetes most people that develop type 2 diabetes do so because of lifestyle factors they're inactive and they carry too much fat around their organs. 
Now that's not to say everyone will be in that situation because like some people, they may just develop the disease well into old age and like all things, things start to wear out. But for those people that develop it much younger, in their 50s, 40s, 30s, you can almost guarantee the diagnosis will be related to lifestyle factors. And the younger you develop it, the more likely you're to suffer complications from it. Now what happens in type 2 diabetes, and I've blogged on this previously in other videos, is your body develops something called insulin resistance. Now insulin is the hormone in your body that lowers your blood glucose levels, and usually this matches the amount of carbohydrate going into your body through the food that you eat. And carbohydrate is converted into glucose, all carbohydrates are converted into glucose, which is a type of sugar, and it's the blood glucose levels that have a potential to rise in diabetes. So usually any form of diabetes means high glucose levels one way or another. So essentially someone with type 2 diabetes is unable to control their blood glucose levels as they, ha as they were before. So the obvious thing to do then is to think, well, if it's carbohydrates that increase my blood glucose levels, then carbohydrates must be bad. I shouldn't eat carbohydrates and therefore my blood glucose levels would be stable. But let's just take a step back here and actually start looking at why the conditions developed in the first place. If you didn't have diabetes, your glucose levels wouldn't go high. In fact, athletes who are the pinnacle of physical performance in our society, generally speaking, will eat quite a lot of carbohydrates. But the difference is they're burning up that fuel and they'll be eating the right types. So actually it benefits them. Whereas someone with type two diabetes, particularly if they developed it quite young, chances are, without sounding harsh, they've been neglecting their lifestyle for quite a while because just by definition and the way the disease comes about, they're probably carrying too much fat, which means they've been having a positive energy, uh, energy balance over several years, probably not exercising very much. So actually it's not so much the carbohydrates that are your problem, it's more their bodies inability to deal with them. So that's the problem here, not necessarily the carbohydrates. So we can do two things in fairness, and my preferred method is always to address the underlying reason why the type 2 diabetes is happening. Getting fit, getting active, eating healthy, losing weight, shedding the fat around the organs, and that will allow someone to recapture their ability to eat more carbohydrates without being so restricted with their diet. That said, Low, ca low carbohydrate diets probably do have a place in type 2 diabetes management and it's something I do recommend. One, because we don't want their glucose levels going too high after meals, particularly whilst they're in that phase of having that insulin resistance. And two, unfortunately, most patients I meet don't actually make the changes necessary to drive the disease backwards or even put it into remission. Some do, but the vast majority don't. So actually we just try and mask over the cracks by giving them a lower carbohydrate diet because then at least they don't get the spikes after meals. Whether or not they stick to it, that's another question. But it still doesn't mean that carbohydrates are necessarily bad. Now what you find with diabetes is the earlier you develop it and the longer you have it, the worse it gets if you don't do something about it. So your tolerance to having carbohydrates in your diet will become less and less and less. So the same portion of carbohydrates will cause higher blood glucose levels if you just leave the disease to manifest. Obviously during this process, you'll probably be getting extra medications given to you to help mask those high glucose levels. But if you took those away, the glucose levels would be on an upward trend without lifestyle change. So yes, low carbohydrate diets are a strategy we can use in the management of type two diabetes, just like other dietary strategies can be used in other conditions such as IBS, where we go on a low FODMAP diet, so you're eating less fermentable carbohydrates, or someone who's um, a hematology patient, for example, might go on a neutropenic diet to avoid getting any food poisoning. Someone with a liver problem might have to have a high energy, high protein diet. So we can use specific dietary um, interventions to help treat conditions. But in an ideal world, although some of these are unavoidable, prevention is the best cure. And it doesn't, again, necessarily mean that the carbohydrates are bad. In fact, they can be good for you if you're eating the right types, the right amount for your activity levels. If you're eating the wrong types and also not looking after yourself, then absolutely, yes, they can be bad for you. But I think unequivocally, we can answer the question that carbohydrates can be beneficial for your health. You can look this up. There's lots of resources out there. I'd um, encourage you to go beyond just a Google search. Look at the medical literature. Learn how to interpret proper studies as to whether or not they're good. See what you're looking at. Stack up the evidence because this isn't just my opinion. This is actually years and years of research. I'm about 15 years in the game now. Um, and also looked at research well beyond that. Plus working with patients day in, day out. So anecdotally, I can see what works, what doesn't, because I see a lot of diet histories, work with a lot of people. 
Um, so although I'm not saying my opinion is gospel, what I am saying is I have a lot of experience and what I'm saying here will be echoed probably pretty widely by anyone that has an education in nutrition, has a degree in it, studied it, works in it. Um, so hopefully my 50 cents or 50p because I'm English is worth something to you. So we'll leave it there guys. So thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you found it useful and entertaining. If you find it useful, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Really help me out, be great to have you. And if you wanna know when I'm posting videos, hit the notification button if you're watching on YouTube. If you're watching on the blog, then thanks for watching. Uh, have a look at the different blogs. Hopefully we can, you can find something that will help you. I'll leave it there and I will see you at the next video.